RCS Community Business Association and RCS Community Library meet the candidates tonight. I'm Judith Wines, I'm the director of the RCS Community Library and member of the steering committee. I'd like to thank the candidates for coming out tonight. We have from your right, Tom Fries, Democratic candidate for town justice, Cindy Rousey, Democratic candidate for town clerk, um, Neil Pouillet, yes, thank you, I, I got a um, little coach there, oh, thanks Mike, <laughs> a Democratic candidate for town councilman, yes. Mike McGuire, um, town councilman, um, Keith Mahler, Republican oh. candidate, Keith Mailer. Keith Mailer, excuse me, I did not ask. Oh, I did, oh excuse me. Keith Mailer Jr., is that correct, sir? Correct. Excellent. Whatever one wants. Just not late for dinner. Um, Republican candidate, town supervisor, Dan Baker, Republican candidate for town councilman. Ken Burns, Republican candidate for councilman. Morgan Fishlock, Republican candidate for clerk. Scott Searles. Republican candidate for highway superintendent, and Charlie Brooks, Republican candidate for justice. Peace. <laughs> I really had to cram my civics lesson tonight. Um, I'd like to thank our moderator, um, the publisher of Columbia Green Media, Mark Vitsavigira. <laughs> and um, lastly, and perhaps most importantly, I'd like to thank you, the audience. Uh, your participation is key to all of this. It's been noted that democracy dies in darkness. Um, so on behalf of the RCS Library and the RCS Community Business Association, we'd like to thank you for coming out tonight and casting your rate. Come on, Mark. Thank you. So just some housekeeping to get us started. Uh, there's some rules that I've been given that we need to abide by. I will read them in no particular order. Order is given. So the format for this event will be as follows. Each candidate will be given three minutes to introduce themselves and up to three minutes at the end to summarize and conclude and up to three minutes to answer a question. Members of the audience, this is participatory, please. Members of the audience are requested not to speak during the event. However, they are welcome to submit questions in writing to the steering committee throughout the event. They simply need to raise their hands and a volunteer from the committee will provide them with a note card and a pen on a clipboard. On the card, audience members should write down which candidate the question is directed to and obviously the question. They should turn the card over so no one can read it and pass the clipboard back to the volunteer who will be waiting nearby. Business Association volunteers will screen the questions for redundancy and pass them along to me and groups by topic. We anticipate a spirited but friendly discussion. We request the audience ask their questions in a way that helps us maintain that atmosphere. A timekeeper will keep track of the clock and will alert candidates when they have 30 seconds remaining, which is a it's going to be a yellow card. I guess it's not yellow. Okay, that's fine. And uh, that will. And then there'll be an ex a 10 second runoff, and then there'll be a bell. And the time is up. Please, I ask you to abide by that. Um, all candidates' answers to questions must be addressed to me only, not to the audience. And uh, I guess that's pretty much housekeeping. Are there any questions from the audience or the candidates about the format? Okay. So I've got questions that have already been submitted, but really, I wanted to. Talk a little bit, Judith talked a little bit about this, but I just personally would like to say thank you to all of you for for, for running. I mean, listen, what, what these folks do is not easy. They're giving up time, effort in their lives, and a lot of what they the decisions they have to make are hard decisions, and they're not popular decisions. Um, it's it's not for everybody, and for people to, to, to be elected to a local office is extraordinarily generous of their time. In my opinion, so everybody should, that's 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 running for local office here tonight, and that's, that's made this event should be uh, should be commended. Um, and, and just one quote before we get started, I was thinking about you know obviously Tip O'Neill says all politics are local, but I found a quote that I thought was to me a little bit better in my mind than that. And that just if you can allow me to read this quote. Let us not seek the Republican answer or the Democratic answer, but the right answer. Let us not seek to fix the blame for the past. Let us accept our own responsibility for the future. 
that was said by uh, President John F. Kennedy. So I thought that was pretty appropriate for the event tonight. So all of that being said, let us get underway. And uh, I think I'll start with a question uh, specifically from the audience for the, oh, I'm sorry, Patrick. Interruptions. <laughs> Three minutes. I read my old man things and I thought I didn't follow them. So let's start in, let's start on the right side. And, uh, uh, get three minutes for an intro. My name is Tom Freese, and first I'd like to uh, thank the uh, Ravina Queens Business Association, the RCS Library, Judith, Mark, for uh, hosting this important event. My name is Tom Freese. I am your Democratic, Conservative, Independent, uh, Reform, Green, and Working Women's Candidate for the Town Justice position. My wife, Sandra Sherman, who's in the facility, and I have raised five children on Stanton Road. I am a lifelong resident of the town of Queemans. Uh, most people know me around town as being a cook, a proprietor uh, of Freeze's Catering Service. When I've been out campaigning, a lot of people have said, what makes a cook a good justice? All right, uh, and I, that's when I have to inform everybody that for the past 35 years, I have worked for the New York State Department of Corrections and Community Supervision. I rose to the ranks of Deputy Superintendent of Hudson Correctional Facility. Part of that 17 year period, 17 years out of the last 35, I have been a facility hearing officer. The state of New York has invested tens of thousands of dollars into training me to be a facility hearing officer. I am certified in um, auditing, I am certified in internal controls. I have been certified in labor relations, mediation, ethics. Uh, and my role as a deputy superintendent required me to uh, perform those duties as a fac uh, facility hearing officer. Uh, about Over the last 17 years, I've conducted about 257 hearings. Doesn't sound like a lot if you span it over 17 years, but it's still about 257 hearings. Now everybody wants to ask, well, what is a hearing like in a correctional facility? In a correctional facility, we still have uh, the uh, assault on staff. We still have the theft charges. We st I'm waiting for Jude to hold up the <laughs> We still have the assault on staff. We still have the theft charges. We still have disorderly conduct, destruction of property, harassment. Those are a few of the charges that I've had to hear to name a few. The prison disciplinary system is set up very much like the public sector court system. Tickets are written, investigations are conducted, evidence is reviewed, witnesses are interviewed, and there is cross-examination. That, I take all the information in and I have to render a decision, um, and the decision has to be fair and impartial. Now, every court case that I have held within a correctional facility goes to central office. There, every court case is taped, it goes to central office, and it is reviewed by central office. And to date, out of 257 hearings, I have only had one overturned. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Cindy Rousey, and I'd like to thank you all for coming. Here, you. Um, I. Am I running for town? Oh, oh, can't hear me? Okay. <laughs> Reset the clock. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. <coughs> and I'm running for town clerk. Uh, my husband and I moved here six, about six years ago for Brian to start working in the, uh, the RCS Community Library. And There's a switch on the mic. On. There you go. Thanks, George. Okay, so we'll try this again. My name is Cindy Rousey, and I've lived here for about six years. My husband, Brian, and I moved our family here in order to, um, for him to start working at the RCS Community Library. And our girls have been enrolled in the RCS uh, school, and we have one who's graduated. Uh, we feel like this is a, an ideal location to live. It's close to Albany, it's close to the Catskills, and the river is beautiful and the trees are beautiful and Roland Park is beautiful. And so it's just a great place to live. And uh, I have quite a bit of experience uh, in town clerk's offices through work that I've done previous to working here. I have a degree in family history and I've done a lot of re 
research in different health groups offices across New York State. So I've seen how some of them run. I've seen different ways of doing things. And I'm, I would like to bring some of those ideas with me into the town clerk's office. Um, I've also uh, worked for the village. I've worked for the town. I'm currently the secretary for the supervisor. So I have that experience in working for a municipality. I know how municipalities work. I know how they're structured. And I can take that knowledge and use it to the best of my ability to make sure the town clerk's office runs as smoothly as possible. <coughs> I've also been involved with some of the bookkeeping at the town, and I've been taking some accounting classes at HBCC in order to uh, gain those skills in working with money and uh, making sure that the records are kept as, um, as well as they can possibly be. Um, it's a great, I feel, I felt that this is a great opportunity to serve the town and also to get to meet everybody. I've been having a wonderful time getting out to meet everybody and I know that's going to be a huge part of the job is service with a smile, is helping people to the best of my ability and helping them to make sure that uh, they have the services that they need from the town clerk. All right, thanks, Cindy. Uh, I'm Neil Puya. Before I go into my bio, Mark, I would agree with you 100%. Actually, I had those comments queued up. I've never run for office before, and uh, this is my first time. And it's just amazing the effort it, it takes. It's nights, it's weekends, it's your own money, it's your family picking up the slack so you can go out and campaign and talk to people. Um, so, party affiliation aside, I agree with you 1,000%. This is tough. It's not easy. <coughs> Um, so I'm Neil Pouye. I've lived in the town for about 10 years, uh, a little over 10 years. Moved here from South Glens Falls, and I grew up in that area. Um, I a veteran. I was uh, six years in the Marine Corps on active duty. Uh, came home after my six years were up and joined the National Guard. Uh, and retired from the National Guard. Um, so I believe strongly in community service. I, I believe strongly that people who have the means to give back should give back. Um, so I'm fortunate enough, uh, I married a great woman, Courtney. We have four kids, uh, three of them are currently in the school system here, so we do have roots here. Uh, I, I like living here, my wife likes living here, my kids like living here. And uh, you know, the, the town board that we have in place, they've done a lot of good things. And we want to keep that momentum and, and make it continue to make it a great place to live. Um, we volunteer, we take our kids to the Northeast uh, Parent Child Society, we go to the uh, food pantry up in Albany. I've been up to the Patroon Land Farm, so we spent a lot of our time volunteering in the community. Uh, and again, a strong sense of community service and ties to the community, I think, are what makes a, a, a town great. Uh, currently employed as an IT manager at KeyBank, or an information technology manager. manager. Uh, I've been there just over 20 years, uh, but I have over 25 years experience uh, in the IT field, from computer programming to hardware repair to networking. Um, and I currently manage a staff of 28 people uh, in a multi-million dollar budget where we talk, where we pay for resources, we pay for st staff, for vendors. So I do have the experience managing people and managing uh, budgets. So again, I think this is a great opportunity. I'd like to thank everybody for coming and uh, I appreciate your time this evening. So thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Mike McGuire, I'm running for town board. Thank you again for coming out. Appreciate the effort put in by the Community Business Association and the library. Um, if you haven't been to the library lately, you should definitely check it out. They have a lot of great programs that you with. It's fantastic. They actually just started a program over in Glenmont where they do a story time at the South Park Library. My son goes to daycare over there and he absolutely loves the story time. So it's, it's great. Um, so I, uh, after, after college, I joined the Peace Corps. I was in the Peace Corps for three years in Belize in Central America. I was a small business volunteer. I focused on developing small micro enterprises with rural, uh, with rural folks. Uh, we designed and training, um, helped implement business plans and develop small micro enterprises. Uh, in addition to that, I also worked with uh, designing and installing solar electric systems in rural communities that had no grid connection. <laughs> so I, we had a wide variety of different projects going on. Uh, my third year in the Peace Corps, I worked in the Peace Corps office. I was a volunteer leader assigned to help to train incoming volunteers 
and also to develop work sites for those volunteers. So that worked with, uh, I worked with liaising the community members, telling them what to expect with volunteers, uh, helping to resolve issues and develop those relationships. Um, following my three years in the Peace Corps, I returned to the Albany area. I've been a lifelong resident of Albany County. Uh, I soon moved with my wife to Boston Lake Road. Uh, we moved into an old farmhouse that my grandparents bought back in the 60s. So actually, all my, fa my father, my aunts and uncles went to the RCS school district. So if you know any McGuire's, it's probably them. So we'll uh, talk about that later if you have any concerns. But, yeah. um, so they raised their family there. When they passed away, the house sat empty for about 10 years. Um, my wife and I moved in there, and we've been slowly working on renovating this property. Uh, it's, it's a lot of work. In 2015, we kind of slowed down a little bit. We had our first child, our son Raymond. Uh, he's two now. Uh, and actually, my wife is expecting our second child in December. So uh, we have roots in the community. I plan on staying here. This is the town that I, I live in. Um, over that time, I've been working in the municipal assessment field. I'm the assessor for the town of Sand Lake over Rensselaer County. I'm the assistant assessor uh, up in Fort Anne, Washington County. Uh, this provides me a unique uh, perspective different from all the other candidates. I'm already involved with local town government at a different level than being a politician. Uh, I see the daily activities that go on in the town. I understand what each department needs and know what the requirements are and how it could actually help them and what they need to do and how they work with one another. Um, I've been able to work with local community leaders in that role, both county, state, and, and level. Um, <laughs> it, it's been a great experience. Uh, so I have history, a dedicated history service, in addition to being in the Peace Corps, I was also in Boy Scouts, so I'm an Eagle Scout. I currently serve on the Town Planning Board, and I'm also on the Town Conservation Advisory Council. I'm familiar with the town, and hoping to be a great town board member for all. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you all, Mark, Judith, RCS, CBA, for attending this evening and holding this event. Congratulations to each and every of you for winning. My name is Keith Malik. I'm a lifelong resident of Ravina, Queens, born and raised on Frangella Drive. I'm a descendant of the Frangella family mushroom plant, and also my mother's Norcino. I have sold Christmas trees and flowers to 90% of you in here over the last 20 years <laughs> to break some of the ice. Um, a little history about myself. I went to Christian Brothers Academy and I graduated in 1992. Um, since then, I have since stayed in the village of Ravina, had multiple careers underneath my belt, some of them working for Fortune 500 companies, balancing budgets all along the way. Some of my community events consist of the Knights of Columbus as a third degree member and past financial secretary inside of our community. Everything that has boiled down to the career path that I have chosen is because I believed in the community that I live in. And anyone that has dealt with me, it's always been a positive reinforcement to know that there's constant opportunity for us to grow and to change and to make a difference down here. So some of the things that I'm willing to bring to the table is a strong balance, is also for us to continue to grow and work together better as one, as a community. Um, <clears throat> over the years, some of the involvements that I've partaken in and what I've done, there's a laundry list of things that the mayor and I do right now. For some of you that don't know, I sit on the current Village Ravina Board as the Board of Trustees and also was named Deputy Mayor shortly thereafter. We won the election three and a half years ago. Um, it was time for our community to have a change and thank God we did a, a great job of campaigning. I'd like to thank the Mayor for sitting in the, in the audience right now as well. I currently own Maurice's Deli and Soho Wraps and Salads in downtown Albany on South Pearl Street. Um, I am very familiar how to operate budgets, food cost purchases, work and negotiate with employees, deal with employees, deal with the state of New York, and also, at one of my previous jobs that I held, working for Lafarge, I was a past union member and a worker there as well. So I not only know how to get my hands dirty, but I know how to run companies. And it says a lot for us today as a future, especially in our community, because we need to be diverse. And I believe that what I can bring to the table for our town will be diversification and working well with all of our department heads in the community. What else do you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, and uh, that's just a little bit about me. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming. Thanks, everybody, who put this event on. It's, uh, I really appreciate it. I'm going to echo what Neil said. It's an extremely amount of work to do what we're doing. Um, my wife and my two kids are here. 
soccer, work, balancing, campaigning. It's an extremely amount, large amount of time. Um, so I just want to thank everybody for the hard work. And my name is Danny Baker, a lifelong resident of the town of Queens. Uh, graduated from here in School. Worked for many small businesses in the town of Cleveland, for Seco Oil, Dossie Excavating, worked for the Flack family. Worked 20 years for the Farge Cement across the street. I was the uh, vice president of the union and I worked my way up through the ranks and got into the managerial side of the business. One thing about the private sector is if you don't produce, they move you out and get somebody else in. Um, currently, I'm a maintenance supervisor at AMRI in Rensselaer. It's, uh, Pharmaceutical manufacturing. Again, we're regulated by the FDA. We are annual $700 million a year of business. Again, if we don't produce, they move you out of the way. Thank you. Have a nice day. We'll get somebody else who can. Um, I'm not extremely <coughs> pleased with what I see in the town of Queens. Like you people, I'm an everyday taxpayer. And I want to try really, really hard to make things better for the community. Um, it just, it isn't what it used to be. When I was a child here, there was businesses, there was Main Street, there was parks. It's just not the same anymore. So I'm getting involved, and I work hard. We're going to turn uh, town agreements around and make it what it used to be. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, my name is Kenny Burns. I'm a lifelong resident. Family's been lifelong residents here. I'm one of eight children uh, by my parents. I'm a big disappointment because I only had five children myself. <laughs> um, I've got well, ten and uh, probably two third or one third grandchildren. Um, one's a couple. And, uh, I've worked out of the union hall most of my life. I'm the operating engineers. I've had my own business for probably ten or fifteen years. I, um, I love our village and our town. I've been with RCS. I graduated here this, um, I don't know what else to say. I, we, we live in, the, in the, out towards Queens Hollow. We were blessed with a beautiful house. And um, <coughs> I work for, uh, I go to Rocks Hollow Church in Hudson. Um, we, we've done a lot of missions trips. We've gone to Africa. We've been to, Guatemala three times, um, been to Mississippi when Katrina hit, we went down there and uh, worked on rehabbing houses and stuff down there, and uh, Prattsville, Skaharie, we, we worked out there for almost two years, um, volunteering our time trying to help those people to get back on their feet. Um, I guess the biggest accomplishment I've got is, um, is my kids, my grandkids. Um, and I, my biggest concern is, is that they've all moved away. And none of them have stayed in our town. And um, I want to change that. I want to, I want to make it so that um, our town is more desirable to move into. I know a lot of, I talked to a young man last night. Um, he lives in a, in a rented apartment and would love to buy a house in the village and raise his family here. And um, there's got to be ways in, in, Again, these guys are all eloquent and, and very educated, but there's got to be ways of us being able to make it a possible uh, for these houses to be bought instead of torn down and uh, rebuilt, new houses put up. I'm a big fan of Carver. I mean, the, the guy, everything that, he's, that he says and that he's done so far is my overboard. And um, I just, I would like to get behind that. I would like to see a lot more building. I would like to see our streets put back the way that they used to be, even better. And um, that doesn't matter. <laughs> I can remember the town, the Main Street Novena, and the Main Street Novena <coughs> small businesses. Little canopies coming out, people sitting out there having coffee and having a sandwich. And I see it in every other town, and it should happen in our town too. And, uh, that's what I would like to see. Thanks for 
running our store, so I have experience with budgeting our payroll and things like that. I've lived in Ravina for about six years now. Um, graduated from Kitsaki Athens in 2009. So I'm young and hungry and willing to work for this town and try to make things better. Charles, I'm the current highway superintendent. I'll make this short and sweet. Uh, I've been married for 26 years. I have uh, four children, seven grandkids, a lifelong resident of Mark for me to in soccer. Uh, they talk about graduating and everything, and I was the first class that actually went through this middle school. Uh, I started with the town in 1991. I held every position in the town. I became deputy highway superintendent in 2005 when Alvin decided to retire. He personally asked me to run for the position, so I did. I got elected, and I would like to continue what he did and what I have plans that I had. That's it. <coughs> submitted by the audience. There's some questions that uh, others have submitted as well. But I, I've got to ask, there, there's an elephant in the room, and I, I think I'm going to just ask this on the Democratic side. Um, just decide how you want to answer this, who wants to answer it, if you all want to turn it. We're working against three minutes in total for the answer. And, and then the elephant in the room is the, the current town supervisor is not here. Um, is there anyone want to speak to? Um, to me, this is a very important event for us to be here, and I wonder if it, Necessarily speak for him, but if you know, that's the elephant in the room, I mean, what, what's I'll the stay for to work towards cleaning up the agent? Okay, then that's wrong. 
Yep. Uh, this, uh, this is a tough question. You're talking about Main Street, right? There's, uh, to my knowledge, we have two Main Streets in town. Right? We have the uh, village, we also have the Hamlet. So it, it's difficult because as a town board member, uh, your influence is limited to the town. So if we have an issue in the village, it's kind of hard for us to dictate terms to the village, tell them that we're going to impose fines when they don't have the, well, we don't have the ability to do that. Now, that being said, I think that'd be one option that maybe uh, the mayor and Mr. Mallet can look into in the village. Um, one way that you can help to revitalize the local economy, there's a uh, property tax exemption called the, the RP485B. I don't know if you're familiar with it, some of you might be. Uh, I'm an assessor, so you know, I kind of got a little bit of uh, background information in this one, so I apologize. But uh, basically, it phases in the assessment for the increase in assessment that's attributable to the improvement made on a business. So let's say the business is already assessed on $100,000, they're paying taxes on $100,000, that's not going to change. Right? They increase the value of that business to $200,000. That increase in taxes that that business owner is going to realize for that $100,000 <coughs> is phased in over a period of time. It incentivizes that business owner, that property, that business owner, to revitalize their, pro um, their property and make it a more, uh, more useful contributor to our tax base and to our town. That's something that can be done in the village and the town. Now, currently, that law, it's an opt-in option. County subscribes to it. Village does not, the town does not. It's something that we can look into, see if there might be something that would save us money in the long term because we'd be able to revitalize our economy and bring in more business. Now, um, the other thing we mentioned was shared services. There was recently a, a study that was put out by the county to look into shared services. Uh, to my knowledge, the, the ca uh, town participated in the study. The village chose not to participate in that study. It's one way that the town could help to share, money, share services throughout the county, save money, um, work with our local neighboring governments, town, the village, the county. And if I can add on to what Mike is saying, they say, you know, mockery is the sincerest form of flattery. We need to look at what other towns are doing. Troy, I don't know how many of you have been to the farmer's market in Troy on a Saturday. It is packed over there. Even the farmer's market in Bethlehem. There are a lot of people that come to these. So for me, it's quality of life initiatives, but we need to look at what Troy is doing. I grew up in Glens Falls. That was a, a paper town for the longest time. And somehow they reinvented themselves. Restaurants, group pubs, uh, they have a park playhouse, they have Crandall Park, Crandall Library that they put money into. So, you know, we don't have to invent the wheel here. We just need to look at what some of these other cities and towns are doing. They have waterfront, we have waterfront, right? What can we do? And I think, too, you need to get the people excited about it. If there's a general sense of apathy in the town, like, oh, it's the town isn't what it used to be, right? We, as elected officials, need to make sure we're engaging with people and, and getting them excited about the future of the town. If we're not doing that, then that general sense of apathy continues. So for me, there's two things there. One, you know, steal, steal ideas, yeah, plagiarize, plagiarize what other towns are doing, right? What works, what doesn't work, right? See what they've done. And two, get people excited about it, whether it's a coalition of people, uh, or working with, uh, you know, select individuals that maybe have a lot of influence in the town. That, you know, to me, those are two good ideas to kind of jumpstart getting people excited about living in the town of I'm going to chime in and defend the village of Ravina, and then we can move on. <clears throat> when we took office three and a half years ago, we started out with hanging baskets to beautify our streets. <clears throat> we did everything but offer, especially on a board meeting and televised, to come out of our own pocket to pay for people to fix up their locations. I started selling fruits and vegetables in 1996 on the village of Main Street and Christmas trees and wreaths and kissing walls. After a period of time, we become complacent. We lose identity on our streets in the village of Ravina. People stop supporting what we do. Since then, we've, I've opened up a salon, and that has since closed due to many reasons. What Rupp Ravina needs and what we've been saying is us to find an identity, very, very much like Hudson, <clears throat> very much like Kutsak, some authenticity. We haven't found it. We put the planners on Main Street. If you have noticed, the fence company has moved in, where the old uh, Sturgis Realty Company used to be. It's a new business. Mr. Bullock has fixed up his building. <clears throat> Mr. Biscone has fixed up his building. And as far as the dilapidated buildings on the Village of Main, uh, Main Street, County Land Bank is getting involved, and other buildings are going up for auction, which we are heavily involved with on a daily basis on how we are going to make it look better. Okay. I think anybody that could has answered that question, so I'll move on to the next question. 
Uh, again, same same group. And believe me, clerks, we'll get to you. There's several questions <laughs> for both of you. But uh, general question again for, for council candidates and supervisor candidate. Water and sewer rents for commercial businesses are metered, while residential users are not metered and pay a flat fee. Do you believe all water and sewer users, residential and commercial, should be metered and charged for the amount of service that they use? I'll, I'll start off. I, I've worked for the um, I had the privilege of working for the village of mm -hmm. for a while. We had meters in everybody's um, basements. There was a lot of maintenance to it. There was a big cost in the initial putting them in. Um, as time went on, it got harder to read them. It got harder. Some of them didn't work. Some of them didn't read. And they just kind of got phased that they wouldn't work. And, and they buy something and put something else in, and it just didn't work. Um, in order, in order to keep it updated, it was it was kind of um, going to cost more to keep the meters in there than they were actually revealing how much water was people you were using. The good part of it was if somebody had a leak in their house or if they had a toilet that was they kept running, their their bill would go up. It would encourage them to fix it, which was a good thing. But um, the, the meter part of it, 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 just Nancy and those guys could agree, if they agree, could, could vouch for it. it. It just didn't work. We could put meters in for like residential houses and stuff like that. Maybe for a rental unit or for a big business or something like that. But for, for residential, it, it just didn't seem to work. That question. Uh, I think it's a great idea. You pay for what you use. Uh, there was a house in Queens that nobody was, it was vacant, and the water main was broke inside the house. The house ran for about a year. Nobody checked on the house, the water was just running away. So if nobody really cares or nobody meters it, nobody knows the stuff. Uh, people water their lawns with glorified drinking water. I think it's real simple. Use it, you pay for it. You want to fill your pool, you pay for it. You want to water your lawn, you pay for it. It's very simple. Anybody else? I have a well. I don't have to tell yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do agree with Dan. I think it's like anything else in life. Though. You pay for what you use. So. Many neighboring towns, such as Bethlehem, have formed industrial development agencies as well as hired professional economic development planners to assist in the economic development within their town and to assure proper planning and to incentivize businesses to come to their town by the way of tax breaks, pilot programs, <coughs> grants. If elected, what is your plan to incentivize economic development in Queens and how do you plan on accomplishing this? Um, I'm not too familiar with IDAs, so I actually called the head of the Albany County IDA. I spoke with him. Uh, so currently, there's a county IDA that works within municipalities that don't have their own individual IDA. Now, my first question for him was, well, how do we pay for the IDA? Because right? I don't want to take money out of taxpayers' pockets to pay for incentivizing business development. It's not something that we should have to do. Uh, he assured me that the IDA is funded through fees that are paid by the participants in the IDA program, which was encouraging. Now, one of the things we talk about is shared services, duplicating services. Now, to me, if we start our own IDA, we're stepping on the toes of the county IDA, which can draw from a larger pool of developers' resources and experience than what we could do here. So, I don't see the benefit of starting a Queeman's IDA when we already have an existing IDA that's willing to work with us. Um, in addition to that, one of the ways to incentivize development I mentioned before was that RP 485B property tax exemption, something that we can look into. And one of the best ways to really incentivize development would be to expand services to residents of the town that currently do not have them. Um, we have 143, the whole quarter going out towards the hollow. Right? We have part of that area has cable, part of it has internet. You get out here in my house, I'm lucky I have a phone service, right? So we, <laughs> I smoke every day. It's awful. If we were to. office, excuse me, has five positions. The town clerk's office is very busy. I heard you want to make a part time position into a full time position. Is this a civic service, uh, 
sorry, civil service position, and why did you do away with the position in the town clerk's office? Yeah, I think it is. But, but by all means, chime in on your view of if you agree with that. The current supervisor is not here. Take that question. We have the deputy. No, we have the deputy to speak to the supervisor. How does it look here? No, no. Yeah. Uh, I think we're good. Yeah. Okay, so we're on to how uh, clerk candidates. What do you feel about that issue? Oh, yeah. I, I thought I was talking about it earlier, and obviously I'm not. <laughs> to say whether that position is needed or not for me. Um, I would want to get into the office. I would want to get in there and work and see what I feel is needed. It's really hard to go on what someone else feels. And so if I get in there and I feel like we need someone, then I will advocate for that with the town board and try and get them to put another part-time position back in there. But coming in from the outside and into that office, I don't know at this point. It's, it's really going to take getting in there and working at that job every day for me to know um, exactly what I think is needed. So it's hard to say. Well, you want to take that? cemetery. She'll run, jump in her car and she'll run down to the cemetery and she'll help that guy lay out all the proper places that the people are supposed to go. Um, in January, it's tax time. And with the new people going into place, I would want them starting off tax time shorthanded. They, sh they should have, they sh I, I would pray that they would put in somebody, train them, and then work through tax time. At the end of tax time, if these guys feel that it's an unnecessary position, then we could do away with the position. But um, I think they're going to find that they're going to need that extra person with people taking vacation time, people getting sick, um, personal things that happen. They really need that extra person, and we've seen it happen. So. so let's stick with the clerks, and we'll stay right there in the morning. Could you please elaborate on some of the uh, ideas? Maybe you let's leave it as if you have top, say, the top three priorities uh, for if you uh, achieve this office. What would you do? Well, I would try to um, keep services the same as Diane. Really says Diane and Diane is going to be
and as a town clerk, I would like to get more information on that website. There's very little on it now on the town clerk's page. And I want to get the information out there so that people can find it at their fingertips. I want to also make sure that there's ease of access to records. I want to make sure that people can find, I know right now there are tax bills online. I want to make sure that they can get their water bills and uh, their sewer bills online. I want them to be able to have all the information they need to live their lives easily at their fingertips. And as Morgan said, great service. I want to make sure that I am providing and my staff is providing the best service possible to each and every person that comes up to that window. I want to make sure that when they leave um, to go home, that they feel like they, every, every need that they have when they came to that window was met. And I want to make sure that it's done in a way that they want to come back there. And they want to have interaction with the town. And in doing that, it's going to help people to be um, appreciative of the town in which they live. And I think that's a great start to some of the ideas that Neil and Mike had. Thank you very much. So let's. This question was asked generally, but I want to ask it. Uh, this question was asked specifically, but I want to ask by the audience, but I want to ask it more generally. Uh, is there anyone up here that, if elected, would not be able to fulfill their full term? Uh, would they? Are there plans for moving specifically within the next two years of any candidate that would cause them not to fulfill their full term? Uh, I plan on dying here, so. <laughs> <laughs>
I also pledge my support to the organizations putting this uh, meeting on tonight, the IRS, RCS, uh, CBA, and will always respect and welcome their concerns and suggestions, recognizing that the organization is a nonpartisan voice and advocate for the business community. Everybody willing to make yeah, that? Yeah, I can't. As a justice, I cannot uh, take policy uh, statements. I can't, I can't go one way or the other on any policy. I only can talk about, as a judge, what I, I can do and what, who I am and what I believe is what I experience. Sure. Let's stick with the justice. We've talked about that position for a while. So, obviously, uh, getting a lot of press, you can't, you can't pick up a newspaper, a website, watch television, hear the radio, without hearing about the opioid crisis. You get your viewpoints at what can be done, what's the judicial role in that. And if you're familiar with the, the term drug courts that are being tried in some areas, what's your view on uh, that kind of situation? Um, my position allowed me to work at Hale Creek Correctional Facility for four years. That, as I mentioned earlier, I hate to repeat myself, that is the Department of Corrections' only um, drug and alcohol treatment program. I truly believe in drug courts. I mean, there's everybody stumbles once in a while. And, you know, as a justice, uh, we need to look into this person and see if we can remand them to a drug court, all right, and try to get them back as a productive citizen. Do you know what I mean? People have families, people make mistakes, and we need to look at that. And if we can, if we can remand them to a drug court, uh, have them monitored, all right? Drug court, so that everybody is aware of this, it's a monitoring system where the people have to report once a week where they're monitored, they often have to go through a drug test, they meet with a counselor. We did the exact same thing with the Department of Corrections. So, yes, I do believe in that system. Basically, uh, we have that in place. In New York State, uh, for drug addiction, for drugs and for alcohol, uh, it's a misdemeanor. As long as it's kept a misdemeanor, it's taken care of in our courts. And village courts. If it is a felony uh, problem, it has to go up to the county. Now, what it would mean would be the if it was a county uh, felony, we, we would do the arraignment here in the town of Queens or the village of Ravina. And then it would be passed up to the grand jury. We've had quite a few of those over the years, but we have that system in place. New York State has that system in place. Uh, as far as uh, we can, as a judge, there isn't anything that I can add to that I don't make policy. All I can do is just follow what the law is upon. So when, they, when it comes into our court, if the district attorney takes it from there, or the uh, town attorney would make it, would talk to the people if there's any kind of uh, uh, plea bargain that can be done, if there's any kind of uh, ideas that can be done, that can be passed on and will come to the bench. At that point, I can either accept what they're looking for or reject what they're looking for. And like in our court here, we try to do uh, keep people as fair as possible. We listen to both sides of the, of the problem. And in, our, in my court, uh, it would be swift and it would be fair decisions treat every uh, person coming in with the utmost respect and fairness. Thank you. So let's uh, leave Scott out there. We've got a question about the highway and uh, sewer. Roads, water, and sewer infrastructure are all an integral part of economic development and making sure that the town has shovel-ready sites for future development. As the highway superintendent, what would you do to ensure that Town remains readily available to respond to any regional development opportunities that may come our way. The only thing I can do is the roads part, as the water is taken care of by the village of Arena and the sewer is taken care of the sewer department at the town of Queens. 
So the only thing I can take care of is the roads to make sure they're maintained up to spot par. Okay, so let's get back to the overall general questions for the, for the supervisor candidate and the, uh, the, the uh, council candidates. Many services, we talked about consolidation, within the town and village are duplicated, such as the courts, building departments, planning and zoning, highway departments, and code enforcement, all of which increase taxes on property owners in Ravina, many of whom are small businesses. Is there a way in which some of these services can be consolidated between the town and the village, much like the police departments were several years ago, to help reduce taxes and potentially make our local governments operate more efficiently? First and foremost, I think that I think that we need to look at consolidation and shared services very lightly but very aggressively. But in order to do that, you have to have communication between both municipalities, and we don't have that right now. We can't get a joint meeting. We can't get a joint workshop. So in order to get to that level, we need to have transparency first as municipalities. And we all need to be on the same page. Well, if some of you remember when we had the village of Ravina police department years ago, and then it had since dissolved, and now we operate underneath the town. Sometimes as a village, we struggle to get the coverage we need. We have also been asked questions, can we do away with our town police department and go based upon the county sheriffs and the state police, and would we have the proper coverage then? So before we go asking ourselves, can we duplicate services? Can we have shared services? And what can we do to get there to lower tax dollars? We better make sure that we have a plan put in place before we do it. Um, I would second what he said in that we would need to have a plan. I think uh, we have two, two, two entities here that need to work together to develop that plan. Uh, that being said, there are areas that you could share services. I mean, we both have planning and zoning boards. We both have building departments. We both Currently, the assessor is technically a shared service because there's one assessor for the town that works within the village as well. So it is something that we can look into and hopefully save some money for the taxpayers within the village of Ravina. Um, as I mentioned before, the county is working on that shared service agreement, and the town has taken steps to enter into that shared service agreement. There's eight different points in that shared service agreement that the town is going to be participating in, and hopefully over the next three to four years, we can save tens of thousands of dollars by engaging in those shared services on a wider scale as well. Uh, yeah, I, again, um, first thing we got to do is we got to start talking to the village of Ravina. I went to a town <coughs> meeting, and uh, the current board said we're going to share services. There's eight things we're going to do. I'm like, wow, this is awesome. We're going down the right road. He wants to share services with all the county. Probably not a bad idea, but never once did he mention talking to the village of Ravina. I, I just don't understand that. Because, uh, yeah, that's the first thing that we need to do is the village of Ravina is doing well, the town of Greenwich is doing well, let's get together. Let's see what we can share. Let's see what we can consolidate. First order of business. Yeah, I was going to add that. I think you know, it's been articulated uh, very well that you need options, right? Without options, you can't put a plan together. And it takes two parties to come to the table. And if the, either party is not willing, we're not doing this town a favor. We're not doing the village a favor. So, uh, again, not being on the board, I don't have the history, uh, you know, with some of the mechanics, uh, some of the, a lot of the history actually with the board and the village. But coming in with a, a fresh set of eyes and a, you know, hopefully a fresh slate to kind of establish those communications, whether it's village, whether it's county, whether it's state, right? You need options. Without options, you can't have a plan. If you're not talking, you can't put those options forward. I'd just like to say, if you can keep the board, and you can, put boards aside, the village and the town do work together. Scott has a great um, report with, with Henry, Henry has a great report with Scott, some of the truck drivers have or something. They're, they're the first ones that would jump in and say, oh, I'm getting in. If we, one year we ran low on salt, we were able to get salt from the village. Um, air compressors, um, wood chippers, uh, this was a big deal. And it was just a, it was an agreement, it was a swap off. And so the town and the village have been working together, we just need to do it more on, on a board level of working together. 
I've been tracking how many answers each person's getting. We're pretty even, so just to be for the record, the, there hasn't been a disparity in the number of times the person's answered, just to be clear. Uh, we've, we've asked all but one, one more audience submitted question. And we've got through all the questions the audience submitted and everything we, we had in case. So I will just, uh, this is a question from the audience, and, and it's kind of general, but uh, and it reads, do the candidates understand the difference between town and village government and their limits? We want to take that. Uh, yes. <laughs> so let's uh, let's go to the wrap up. We're gonna, and again, we'll uh, we'll wrap this up. You have, you have three minutes for a closing statement. We started on the right. Let's let's uh, end on the left. Then, all right. So Charlie. Everybody have to come.
and, and put aside all the, the differences. Um, again, our police department, I don't think anybody really sees, and, and you can't see all that Scott does, and you can't see all that his guys do, and you can't see all that Diane and her crew does in her office. And the councilman, Tom Dolan works his tail off trying to find out different information and stuff. Sometimes he gets mad at me because I squashed it. Um, <laughs> but, Nita, um, she's, her heart is in this place. But it's what I'm saying is, is we need to put all the differences aside and we can all just work together. Again, uh, thanks everybody for coming. Uh, it's a great opportunity to meet the candidates. I would like to charge uh, the Library and Business Association in March when the village runs. Uh, we'll do this again. And then in a couple of years when the town again has their election, let's do this again. Um, it's going to be interesting to see who runs on that slate. Um, again, everybody knows me. I'm fairly simple. I want to listen to the people. The poor people in Queen Tal, they drive by RKs. There's 13,000 pirates sitting there. Nothing's getting done, okay? We've got to do something. Poor people live by the hand of Quite Creek. We went to every single person. The first thing they said is, what are you going to do with the flood? Every time it rains, a hurricane, we flood out. What are you going to do? I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something. I'm going to try to work my butt off. Again, everybody knows my stance. We're going to share services with the village of Urbana, the greatest asset that the town has. We're going to try hard. Uh, every time there's a fire in the town of Queemans, nothing happens to the building. You can count on your hand how many burned out buildings there is, right? You watch the news, the city of Albany has a fire, the next day it's being torn down. I don't know why we can't do that in town of Queens. Something that we gotta look at. Something that, something has to change. There's boarded up buildings, <coughs> there's burned out buildings. I drive by one every day on Route 144. How long is the building gonna sit there burned out? I don't know. We are gonna try to change that climate in the town of Queens. Again, there's junk cars all over the place. Does everybody like driving by junk cars? I certainly don't. I don't know why the town of Queens lets this happen. Again, <coughs> we're going to work to change this stuff. Thank you. Um, I can begin by telling you my work ethic is second to none. The village board that's sitting in this room right now have missed two meetings in the past three and a half years. I will not cancel five meetings as your town supervisor in 2016, and I will not cancel four meetings in 2017, as your town, town supervisor has done. I will commit my pledge and my time to the town of Queens, first and foremost. I'm, I'm under a huge understanding that as a town supervisor, you need to be available to all the townspeople and their department heads at every given time. You need to listen to what they have to say like we do right now in the village of Ravina, and we take our department heads seriously and their feedback seriously. Bipartisan aside, Democrat or Republican, we allow everyone to have their opinion, and I choose to do so as the town agreement supervisor. I also include everyone on budget communication and open and honest communication. And some people have asked me, how would you intend on running the town agreement when you own a business in downtown Albany? I can guarantee you, I will be there more now ever as your town of Queen and supervisor than your current town of Queen and supervisor today. Clearly tonight, he's not here. I have private, previous obligations, I cancel them. This is what's important to me. The town of Queen's is what's important to me. To serve the town of Queen's and the people in it is what's gonna be important to me. My communications with several people in downtown Albany, my strength, my hands stretch far and deep from Republican to Democrat and to some other people. I choose not to name. We can get things done. We can get things done collaboratively. We can get things done correctively. And I intend on keeping the communication up with the current village board of Ravina. I intend on coming in and look at every department and how the tax dollars are spent internally and getting some structure. Have you all noticed that the department heads and the town clerk and the treasury over in the village of Ravina have stayed stable over the past 15 to 20 years? No matter what has happened, that board has stayed the same. The town needs to mimic that type of operation. We need to keep people in the place so that the budget stay conformed. Not when somebody comes in and starts pulling this and pulling that and wants to do something different. If it's fixed, if it's not broken, let's not fix it. That's what I believe. I believe that if we had people in the proper places that cared and didn't just go one game, <coughs> or all the way things, Mrs. Warner and I beg, 
get, we agree to disagree, but we always come out. Mr. Bailey wants a new fire truck, he gets it, right? These are things that are important. I just want to reiterate to everyone that I'm going to be the supervisor that's going to be open and honest with no backdoor communication, with no sneaky bipartisan rules or this, that, and other thing. And we're going to work together with the current board that's in there. And I'm going to work together with the board that's in the village room. I'd like to uh, thank everybody for taking time out of your evening to come out. Uh, this is what democracy is about. You able to ask questions, you'll also be able to up here and answer them. It keeps us honest. So I encourage you to continue asking questions for the rest of this election cycle and going forward. If you ever have any questions of, of me, please call me, find me, whatever it is, I'll be happy to answer. And if I don't know the answer, I'm going to find it for you. Um, I want to thank the Community Business Association and the library for putting this event together. I hope we may not agree on every single point. I think that all of us have the best intentions of the town at heart. We want to see our town grow and develop into a successful and dynamic community. Um, and uh, thank you all very much for coming. Thanks, so again, thank you all uh, for coming. I know that everyone up here has the best interest of the town at heart. When you put yourself up here, when you put yourself out there, it's not always easy, and when you travel around and you talk to people, you campaign, you go door to door, you, you hear some stories. I heard a story the other night uh, about a woman down in the hamlet who tried to sell her house, lower her price time after time after time, switch realtors, lower the price again time after time after time. Unfortunately, not one thing. Why is that? Right? We need to ask those questions, the hard questions of ourselves, and say, why are people looking at houses with waterfront views? Right? So that got me thinking, what, what could we do? And there's three things that I'm big on. One is quality of life. I'm not from here. I've been here 10 years, and I've been lucky enough to travel the world with my job and the Marines. Um, I've been lucky to travel locally. I've been, able to, I've been lucky to travel throughout the state. And you can take what different towns are doing, what they're successful with. And as I said earlier, you can, you can take those ideas and bring them back to our town. So quality of life with me is huge. I have four kids, right? Playgrounds. Uh, bike paths, walking paths, expanded farmer's markets. Those are the things that are important to me. Um, just like there are things that are important to everybody in this town. It doesn't take a body of elected officials. It takes the community to, to, to be excited about our town. I said that earlier, and I believe in it strongly. Uh, you need to be excited living in the town of Queens because it's going to help us all in the long run. Right? We want to take what we what the work we've done, we want to build off that, and we want to look at new opportunities. For example, Cindy mentioned it earlier, I have an IT background, right? We can't get our water and sewer bills online. Why is that? Right? We should be looking at those kinds of things to make life easier, to attract people. Right? Broadband, I mentioned Microsoft, there's grants, there's, there's things we can be pursuing to improve those types of quality of life initiatives. And if, if we can successfully do that, <coughs> that will bring people to our town. And that's what this is about, right? Making it a great place. You know, somebody said earlier, all their kids have left. I think it's kind of how the kids have left. Um, we don't want our kids to leave, right? We want to be close. You know, we want our kids to stay. We want opportunities for our kids. And it starts here. It starts with us, right? We need to be excited. So I think my military experience, I think my current IT experience, the, the, the staff of 30 people that I have spread throughout the world, across the country, um, the budgets that I manage, you know, I don't have political experience. I don't, and I'll be honest about that. But I have a lot of world experience, I have a lot of life experience, and I want to leverage that to help continue to make Queen as a great place to live and call home. So thank you. Um, I'd like to thank you all for coming as well. And uh, I just want to um, tell you that how, uh, how much I'm looking forward to the opportunity to serve as a town clerk. Uh, it's been um, interesting being out there talking to people and getting to know a lot more people in this community. Since we've only been here for six years, we haven't had that opportunity, um, or Brian a little more than me, <laughs> um, to get to know everyone. And that's what I'm really most looking forward to, is getting to know everyone. And I just want you to know that I am ready to hit the ground running. Um, I've been working at the town for almost two years now, and I'm ready to take the experiences I've had there and move right into the clerk's <coughs> office. Uh, I've, I've done a lot of family history. I know those records. I've 
tromp through many a cemetery, I can tell you. <laughs> so I won't be any stranger to that as well. I, um, when I was working at the village, I spearheaded a records management grant um, that the village was able to get in order to really clean up a mess of records that they had. And the space looks beautiful now. It's, and they can find things. And I want to make sure that I do that same thing for the town, to look for those grants and look for those opportunities to make those records available to everyone at the town. And make it so that we can find things and easily, put our fingers on anything at any one time. Uh, can't remember if I said it. I'm a notary I'm a public, so I can also step right into that and uh, have that service available for the townspeople as well. And I'm just looking for the opportunity to provide great service and to use the skills I have with the internet, with um, the web page, with computers, to update some of the process, um, processes in the town clerk's office and to hopefully make it so that Everyone in the town has the information that they need. And I would love, um, like I said before, I'd love that opportunity. And um, thank you all for coming in to me for us tonight. <laughs> Most people know me as uh, Tom Freeze the Cook. And that's exactly why I wanted to come here this evening, was to clarify I guess the secret life that I've had for the past 35 years. I've really kept a low profile in town, other than sneaking in and out of the bank or the store in my suit or whatever in the morning. Uh, but I do have 35 years experience with the Department of Corrections. I can do more than flip chicken and hamburgers uh, or make a, a good chicken marsala. I have uh, many, many years of management experience and in fact, I've actually, some people have said to me when I walk up door to door, aren't you a cook in the prison? And to be honest with you, I've never been a cook in the prison. <laughs> so I came in as a, as a manager, actually an administrator, uh, and I worked my way up through the ranks. I took advantage of every single training opportunity, whether it's in labor relations, ethics, mediation, uh, grievance mediation. Um, as a facility auditor, I go out and audit facilities around the state of New York, correctional facilities. Um, I'm certified in internal controls. I'm certified in environmental management. Um, and actually at the prison system, I was responsible for uh, maintenance, food service, medical, powerhouse, business office, um, human resources, personnel timekeeping, oh my God, I could go on and on and on, I'm pulling my hair out every day. You know, those people that are, you know, I commend my fellow candidates for wanna step up and, and go out and campaign. It really, truly is uh, a hard job. I mean, I ride through town, and I'm one of these guys that when I see my sign laying on the ground, I'm like, somebody knocked over my sign. You know? <laughs> right, honey? <laughs> and I pull over, and I put my sign up, and I've seen Scott Searles' sign next to mine laying down, and I put his sign up also, and I was on the 9W. It's the way it's got to be. You know why? Because it's all about working together, right? And you know, I, I was on a 9W, my, no, I'm taking all the time I want. I'm in <laughs> I was on a 9W, I see, I see my sign was knocked over and Keith's sign was knocked over and I put my sign up. Keith's sign for some reason has no stakes left though. So, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's all about, get rid of that. <laughs> uh, I just want to say, you know, I believe I'm an excellent candidate for Position of town justice. I will be fair. That's the way it goes. Remember her name. So, as you may have noticed, uh, this is being
recorded doubly. Um, the News Herald is recording it, um, and uh, one of Carver's technology people has set up a GoPro, so you can feel active and exciting because you are on a GoPro. Uh, the links to the video will be made available tomorrow on the rcscba.com, on the Business Association's website, the library's website, and the Library and Business Association's Facebook page. This will also be related to Mid Hudson Cable and should be available on their public access channel probably within the week. Um, so again, hand it back to Mark. And I'll just say if they're all self plugging, um, uh, it'll also be available again at the Ravina News Herald the website, which is Hudson Daily 360.com. So please go to it uh, through that site if you would like. But uh, you know, I said to the candidates at the beginning, uh, it, was, it takes a lot to be here, and it takes a lot for the audience to be here. Uh, there's other things to do on a Wednesday night. It was a beautiful 65 to 70 degree uh, evening with the New York Yankees. Anybody in this world, by the way? The Yankees win. Um, and they were playing in the playoffs. There's other options. And I, and I can't believe there's kids here that have been this, this quiet and this very patient. So they should be well as well. So um, I thank you all for coming out and uh, appreciate your, your time and your effort today, as well as. Thank you.